All right, welcome back. This is Rice and Beans. This is another episode today. We are here with the wonderful Kimberly. She is today representing Mexico. Yeah. So uh, my name is Kimberly Gonzalez. I am the president of Ole, which is a organization Latina estudiantil on campus, and I'm also the president of CIA, which is a Latina sorority on campus. Um, and yeah, I'm from Nayarit, Mexico. And this is like a coastal town really close to uh, Guadalajara, but the name of the actual town is called Tuxpan. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in San Diego, California, and I've lived there like my entire life. Mm -hmm. But, um, so like basically I was born in San Diego, California, and then I lived in Mexico six years first, and then I moved okay. back to um, San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, so like my first language is Spanish, and I identify very like strongly with the uh, Mexican yeah. culture. Um, but Perfect. I feel like as you like grow, um, in like America like yeah. at the same time like I remember going back home to Mexico and like my um, cousins and like my aunts would be like well you're Mexican but you're not like like full Mexican because like oh no you know so like um it's like very there's like this outsider like, syndrome type yeah of something like that and then at the same time you're like in America but like you're not really seen sometimes as like full American so what was that what was that quote you said earlier yeah so um this quote is, is in Spanish is ni de aquí ni de allá which if you translate it, it means not from here or from there. Mm -hmm. And it's like this idea that like, yes, you're Mexican and American, but like you're not fully both because yeah. you haven't lived your whole like life and like have like mm -hmm. all these experiences from like this particular country. So you kind of identify with both. Yeah. And in some ways are like kind of a little bit rejected from both. Uh -huh. So does this apply yeah. to people who grew up in like halfway or does this apply to people who, you know, spend their whole lives there, maybe move when they're like 20, 30? Yeah, I feel like it's like very broad because I've seen it used in like very different ways. Mm -hmm. um, like I have some um, like cousins who they were born in Mexico but then lived their yeah. entire lives in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So like they're not really because they don't really identify as much because they don't speak Spanish and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it's like for them that would be one case. And then it's also used like for example like my parents like they were. Um, born in Mexico, lived their entire lives in Mexico, and then they migrated to the United States. Mm -hmm. um, they were like, like late 20s. Yeah. And like, it also applies to them because even though they're like Mexican, yeah. and when you go to Mexico, they call you gringo, which means yeah. like, it kind of means like American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So yeah, I feel like it applies to like very like different. Hmm. Yeah. Is it like a negative connotation? Um, I think initially it kind of is but then i feel like it's like being reclaimed mm -hmm. um because like now there's this subset of like not being like necessarily mm -hmm. just mexican or yeah. just american but being like mexican american or like chicano or um, yeah. any of that and i feel like now it's like it's like also a pride thing like yeah mm -hmm. like i'm mexican american or yeah i'm chicano like yeah yeah so it's like now like another like I want to say, like, culture. In my opinion, like, I think that's the healthy way to view it and yeah. not as a negative thing, which yeah. is why I asked that question. Mm -hmm. So personally, like, as half Colombian, half American, uh, I guess I went through my own little identity crisis very similarly yeah. about, you know, which one am I? Am I double dipping? You mm -hmm. know, I don't feel like I belong in one. But then I eventually realized that that is what I am. I'm both yeah. of them, yeah. American and Colombian. So I see American mm -hmm. and Mexican at the same time. You can do both, even if yeah. you're, you spend part of your life in one country, part of your life in another. And that's, I mean... I'm not gonna get all American political about this, but <laughs> yeah. the American way, you know, you, America is like heterogeneous mm -hmm. in, in what it is. If you think of what is American culture, the first thing I just think of is inclusion, you know, diversity. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, it could get better, and it is getting better. Whether they, mm -hmm. whether I say they, I mean just like <laughs> yeah. the government, whether they want to, yeah. whether they want it or not. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about Mexican culture because you seem to have a lot to say. We don't yeah. have a lot of time, so. Um, <laughs> what are some of your favorite parts? Like, what yeah, do you miss so, a lot? Um, for me, I think like what I really, really love about Mexican culture is like one the resiliency of the people. Like, mm -hmm. recently we had um, Hurricane Willa hit um, Mexico, yeah. and um, my family was actually affected. Like, my town like flooded. Um, um, so like everybody in the town like there's like I don't know like probably like five thousand people like they mm -hmm. all like lost everything because like the flooding was like really really high. Dang. Yeah. So um, but like people like I hope really. Okay. Yeah, they're they're okay, they're okay now. Um, it was just like a rough time, but like mm -hmm. I really saw like the resiliency of the people and like how united we are because other towns were like sending stuff. Like oh. my parents like were sending stuff from like California mm -hmm. and like I did a GoFundMe and like all of that and like I just really saw the community like unite. Um, 
not just like in Mexico, but like even like the United States, like all over, like people were sending money because like there's a lot of like, yeah. Um, so like that's like one thing, and like how vibrant we are. Mm -hmm. Um, let's go into that a little bit. Yeah, like the foods. Um, I think like one thing is just we're very like lively, um, Mm, like bright, energetic. Yeah, and I think that comes from like resiliency. Like Mm -hmm. when you have like a lot of like struggles in your life, yeah, like you like instead of like my grandma has this like thing um this like quote that she says like when life is going like badly just like turn like the other cheek mm-hmm. which like to smile so it's like saying like even if like there's like a lot of like struggles like you yeah. just like keep smiling and like be happy because like that is life um that's so a great think, lesson we can yeah, all use yeah i think that's like a big thing that like contributes to like being like so vibrant and like just like the culture um i mean like the food like so colorful and like oh, yes. like the music <laughs> like you know like i feel like what is me- let's talk about mexican music real quickly yeah so um some like really famous artists like there's different genres of mm-hmm. course but like one of them is vicente fernandez and he's like it's like like more like traditional um mm-hmm. but then there's like folklorico which is like the ones that i don't know if you've seen them but like there's like big dresses and like you yeah. like I um, have. Yeah. But how would you describe this music for the viewers at home who have no idea? I mean, I've been yeah. fortunate enough to have like a yeah. My, my mom's like friends with all the other Hispanic mm-hmm. moms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's um it's called like folklorico, which is like folklore, I think in English. Mm-hmm. It's like a traditional um dancing, but that's very specific to like different regions. So like for mm-hmm. example, like um like some regions call what it's called zapateado which if you translate that it's like called like shoe yeah. sh- shoe hitting something like that yeah. but it's basically so you're tapping your feet um mm-hmm. a lot and then there's like there's a lot of different ones like from like michoacan um there's like dances that like you put a cup on top of your head and like you have to perform without the without cup like spilling spray. yeah so this <laughs> those are like very like regional um traditional like dances and then of course we have like merengue like cumbia yeah. um like one like like really uh, famous Mexican American um, singer like Selena. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah so she's, she's like Mexican Texas. American. Yeah, she's from um, Texas. Hmm. But yeah, that's like someone like really look up to like for Mexican Americans especially. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I feel like we have like music that like it's it's so global because there's just so many like different like diverse like people in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like it has also a great. Um, great ramp to get to launch into the international music scene as well yeah it's like very unique and it's mm-hmm. high spirited and people just want to dance yeah. to it they're really good at doing that at making yeah. that happen uh, so food let's break some myths real let's break some stereotypes okay. real quick so let's talk about tacos americans tacos. have an idea of what a taco is yeah and my understanding is that that is not what the taco <laughs> is <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah this is a big one for me because my favorite food is tacos oh, wow. um yeah so there's like like here like i know i've had like taco bell and like those mm-hmm. taco and that's not like a traditional mexican taco mm-hmm. um so the way that like like for example like my family makes it you use a soft tortilla mm-hmm. um not like hard shells we don't really use those as much mm-hmm. um and then you have like your meat your meat is it you like know? white corn or yellow corn um we use with white yeah okay yeah but I think it like depends because some areas there's actually like blue, blue corn, corn that they use. Yeah. Oh, sorry, we forgot to make the distinction more apparent. These are corn tortillas, by the way, not yes, flour. Yeah, not flour tortillas. <laughs> These are corn tortillas. Um, and the, the taste is so yeah, much better. Yeah, it's, it's and it's like completely different because I feel like we use the flour ones for burritos, mm. but then the corn ones are for tacos. Yeah. Yeah, and then like you know like your salsas, your guacamole. Um, <laughs> yeah, we use like onion, cilantro, those are like big ones. Yes, yeah, But yeah, like different people make it differently. Mm-hmm. Um, but those are the ones that we use. And then, like, not the one thing that like I feel like a lot of people have like a stereotype is that um, Mexicans are like super like, oh, we love spice, like spicy foods. Yeah. And it's true, a lot of us do. Mm-hmm. But then, like, some other people don't. So it's always like, that's a stereotype that I hear all the yeah. time. Like, if you, if some if somebody says, like, oh, like, I don't like spicy food, and they're like, and you're Mexican? Yeah, that's like the like stereotype <laughs> because because of the fact that, like, jalapenos are yeah, jalapenos. Yeah. And then, you know, you go to the hot sauce aisle, yeah, and yeah. half of them take the they appropriate, like, Mexican <laughs> culture to advertise yeah, their hot sauce. Yeah. So that's one so, thing. So, but that's like, it, like, spicy foods are a big part of our culture, but it's mm-hmm. not like everything, you know? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, but tacos are great. I feel like the best ones are like the ones you get from the street. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if you like Tijuana. I've heard legends about this. Yes, those are the <laughs> best. Like at the taco trucks or like mm-hmm. shops on the streets, those are the best tacos. That's a, that's a common theme around with like just delicacies. Like when you have those restaurants that set up, they're just never really the same. Yeah. 
All right, so let's talk about how you guys channel your Mexican culture at home uh, in San Diego, I guess. Or okay, we yeah. can also talk about here, how you do yeah. that too. Or why not so, both? <laughs> <Porque los dos. laughs> yeah, true. Um, so in San Diego, uh, we're like very tight knit. Um, I think that's like a big thing for like Mexican families, like mm -hmm. very like tight knit um, families, and they're like very big. So like, we do a lot of like parties that we have. Like we celebrate mm -hmm. everything, and we do it in family, like in that's familia. Like, that's, that's like Latin do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's like very like big like Latin American countries. Um, but yeah, so one thing is like there for like through our uh, parties, celebrations, mm -hmm. and then um, we do celebrate like Mexican holidays, como um, Vito de la Independencia, so it's mm -hmm. like Independence Day. Um, what was the holiday that just came came by? Oh, November second, Dia de los Muertos, which is Day of the Dead. That's oh. like really big for us. Um, like we really honor and like celebrate our loved ones that have passed away, mm -hmm. and like it's not a sad holiday. Yeah, yeah, it's simply not about like thinking like oh like they're gone, mm -hmm. but just thinking like every like contribution that they made and how important they are, and like they're still yeah. a part of the family. They're still there, and you like honor and celebrate them. I really love yeah. that idea, and that's something I just wanted to do a little mm -hmm. cr cr cross cultural comparison. Mm -hmm. In New Orleans, like funeral processions, very similar idea yeah. you're not it's not a sad thing mm -hmm. you'll see people marching down the streets yeah. dancing you know parading and you think oh that's just New Orleans they're always doing yeah. that but there it's literally a funeral mm -hmm. you have people dancing have you ever I don't know if you've seen this but the people who carry the body uh -huh. in the in the casket in the back Casket. Yeah, I think in the casket, yeah. they're like dancing and they're all coordinated yeah. and stuff, and like they're you know moving this box around with the body, and it's like whoa, it's gonna fall. Yeah. But that idea of mm -hmm. when someone dies, you remember them, as opposed to crying about their mm -hmm. like them not being here. Mm -hmm. I think, in fact, it preserves their life yeah, and their memories and their stuff. Mem yeah, the memories that we have of them. I think that's the big one because I like, had like, family members who have passed away and mm -hmm. I remember them saying, like, yeah, like, I don't want you to cry for me. Like, I want you to like, be happy, like, celebrate, have a party. Like, that's yeah. what they told us. And like, that's what we try to do. Um, mm -hmm. And like, every like, um, November 2nd, people go to like, the cemetery in Mexico and like, basically what we do is like we sit around um like the tomb and yeah. like we have food and drinks and oh, wow. music like live music and you stay there all day it's like a picnic at the cemetery because mm -hmm. you want to be with your loved ones yeah. the idea is that they're like there with you yeah so um, i don't want to get too gloomy here but do you think that kind of makes people allows people to accept death a little bit easier yeah i think that's the big one um like to like it's not just to accept death but like i think it's more the idea that like they're still with you. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. Like they're not gonna but, go away, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, cause like, like even like yeah, like I'll be I'll be sad sometimes when we, like family members pass away and like yeah. later on you think of them and you're sad that they're not there. But at the same time, I think like deep within me, I'm like they are here just because yeah. I have that so ingrained in me. Mm -hmm. um, I love yeah. that way of thinking. Yeah. yeah, that's something we could definitely learn from this from Mexican culture. Yeah. And I say we, I just mean like the, the <laughs> homogenous unit of yeah. humans. Mm -hmm. What else should we talk about here? Oh yeah, how you are channeling it at home. Oh yeah, so yeah, the so um, really definitely here, like guess, uh -huh. the yeah, the celebration is one, the holidays is one. Um, another thing is like we always like keep up with like family, like we call them constantly on the yeah. phone. Um, that's the big one, and then the food, mm -hmm. like because that's what my mom cooks every day. So like that's just a did very, she send like, it over? Um, oh, so for how do I do it here? Oh, here I do it by like joining my student group so like that's why I joined Ole and that's yeah. why I joined like Sia and through the student groups that we have like we put on events that I feel like are a way to like showcase my culture and like yeah. for other people to learn. I just saw like yeah. the empanada sale that you yeah, guys Yeah, yeah. So that's a way for us to like t like show each other our culture and like, and, like food. share it and stuff. Yeah, and then like on Friday we had our Day of the Dead celebration. Mm -hmm. So we made like sugar schools and people were decorating them and like learning a little bit more about what Day of the Dead is. Yeah, because I, I yeah. don't think people really understand what that mm -hmm. is. I mean, there's this movie that came out, but I wasn't able to watch yeah, Coco? it. Yeah, Coco. Coco. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. Do you think the portrayal is the portrayal accurate? Yeah, I think it's very accurate. I felt like very connected to the movie as oh, yeah? I watched it. Yeah. Do you think it's a good it's a good um, method of spreading spreading that idea around? Yeah, I think I think it's like very good because especially like with children, I feel like a oh, lot yeah. of like my little like cousins they were like really excited to see this movie. I mm -hmm. think it's like you see the representation of like like you know your culture is like on a big screen. So yeah. I think it's like a great way to do it. It's definitely like a first step to like getting. Um, like me Mexican culture like more mm -hmm. like mainstream without yes. like the negative connotations because like usually it's portrayed in like a negative light oh yeah especially this in was, this like, country yeah this was like a very like positive example of like mm -hmm. what our culture is so, yeah. yeah I think it's a great movie well, let's end on that note. So we're hitting we're hitting the time limit here. Ooh. So uh, thanks for joining us. You had so many good things to share. Um, I won't think. I don't even think I'll have to edit this <laughs> at all because it's, it's so it's so organic and flowing. Yeah. 
Um, so that Thank was, you for having me. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was a, it was a great portrayal of Mexico. I hope is um, I hope that the listeners learned something. I've definitely learned something myself. Mm. And so, all right, listeners, this is directed towards you now. Don't forget that we do this every single week. That playlist that we update every week is getting updated again. And you will find all songs we've ever played since I started this radio show. How many years ago? One, two, three, maybe three and a half years ago. That's a lot of songs on the Facebook page. So check that out and have a great week.